Hi everyone, uh, Maxim here. Today it's my great pleasure to have like uh, Archil that will uh, explain to us like uh, all of the new uh, stuff that are coming with the latest like template uh, uh, update due to the tools release last week. And I think one of the best features out of it is like the removal of the lib folder. So Archil from Sekera Lab, I guess you all know him. And uh, Archil, over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Maxime. Okay. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, so I'll try and keep it short. Most importantly, I've got a bad reputation for running over. I've never been able to live it down. Um, so what I've done here, I think, is, is try to give you an idea of some of the reasoning um, and uh, practicalities of removing the lib directory in the latest template update. Apologies if you didn't have enough warning for this and you just saw these massive merge conflicts in your in your template updates um, for, from the pipeline template after the latest version of tools. Um, it's, it's one of those things that we sort of decided relatively um, last minute at the, the end of core, core retreat in Sweden. Um, and so the main motivation, I guess, behind removing the lib directory from the pipeline template is that we want to try and make each component in a pipeline, so that includes modules, sub-workflows, and workflows, as self-enclosed as possible. Um, the fact that we now have, or we had this lib directory sitting outside these components, we have to basically import and use them um, within a module, sub-workflow, workflow, wherever we want it. And so a classic example of that is in this main script, we're directly importing this workflow main script from the lib directory to, to use this particular function. Now, if we want to make components self-enclosed, then having this lib directory was a bit of a pain because now you need to maintain various functions and, and, and classes and whatever else we were doing there in the lib directory separately from these components. And so if I wanted to share a component with you to write your own pipeline or workflow, you'd not only have to install that particular sub-workflow and workflow, but also install and copy across everything in the lib directory, which is which then becomes detached, difficult to maintain. And so I guess as a general theme where we're going um, with the pipeline template is that we want to try and make each of these components as self-enclosed as, as possible. So the module will come with its main script, it will come with its tests via NF test. This is some of the stuff that we've, we've been working on in the Fetch NGS pipeline and, and various other pipelines already started using NF test. Um, it's a separate topic to, to what this particular bite size is about, and maybe we'll have another one later about the, some of the stuff that we've been doing on NF test to, um, to really try and standardize um, what this looks like. And so for each component, you can imagine it coming with a main script that, that runs a process or a sub workflow or a workflow even. Um, and then that component will also ideally come with its own configuration, um, ideally publishing logic and various other things. Again, it just makes it a lot easier to share one of those sub workflows with another pipeline if everything is already bundled there you can change it down down downstream if you want um, but it's much easier to do that and at the moment we've got a similar problem with the modules.config where we've got this big monolithic config with all of the different process selectors uh, needed in the pipeline so rather than having one huge file it kind of makes more sense to have these shipped with these components and we talked about this at length at the um, um, Barcelona hackathon and various things have happened since then that um, that will allow us to um, essentially make that a bit easier uh, in terms of components. But there are other things also potentially in the pipeline template in the future that might be worth splitting out as well, like the parameter schema. Um, at the moment, again, that's one big monolithic file. If you want to share components, you in need to install the components and then also maintain a separate schema with all the parameters that you might might be using in those components as well. And this becomes more of an issue at a workflow level where you really start using parameters within the workflow context. This is something we've been talking to the Nextflow team about um, in terms of building out and, and sort of having this sort of philosophy ideally. Where this is all leading to in the future potentially is we could have an option in the NF Core Tools package that is doing a, a module install, a sub-workflow install, as well as a workflow install. 
The only way we can do a workflow install is by having everything that workflow needs within a directory that we can then go and install it. If someone wants to install fetch NGS in their, in their particular pipeline, the more detached we keep all of these different components from the main pipeline structure, the easier it will be to ship. And so that's the main sort of motivation behind this. There'll be huge advantages for this, but, but another also advantage is that if we now remove the lib directory and have these util sub workflows, as I'll show you very quickly in a second, um, it also will mean that we can start moving towards a pipeline template that is a bit more granular in terms of um, the components that you can install with the pipeline template. So right now, there are a few options where you can configure whether you want igenomes config or um, CICD and various other things within the pipeline template. But ideally, it, it would be nice to make the pipeline template as flexible as possible to things like genomes. You may not want to use genomes um, in, in an astronomy pipeline or another pipeline. And so what some of this reconfiguration with the lib directory is doing is it's allowing us to also now make the pipeline template more flexible to um, uh, to to users where they can actually say, well, I don't want iGenomes or I don't want um, CICD. And, and we can really start naming it down. What's made that difficult in the past is we've used these cookie cutter replacements all over the pipeline template and it becomes a mess to maintain and update and test. Whereas having isolated sub workflows um, makes it um, a lot easier to do. And also now the fact that they're NF4 sub workflows, everything that was in the lib directory now has been pushed to NF4 modules as a sub workflow. So we can now also start maintaining these sub workflows via NF4 modules and install them um, more readily rather than having to do an NF4 tools release with a bunch of changes and merging conflicts and that sort of thing. So overall, there's a number of advantages to doing it. I understand it can be a bit tricky to, to do the transition, but essentially everything that was in the lib, we now have in, in separate sub workflows. Um, and the idea is then to install the sub workflows and then slowly, slowly remove the lib directory. And in the blog that Maxime posted in the bite size channel, um, there's a tip box there that, that kind of shows potentially what might be a better way to do this rather than wrestling with, with template updates. So a few people were who are coming back with feedback saying, look, it's difficult to manage this in. And so I wrote a brief summary of what might help um, in order to make that easier. And essentially, if you if you follow that advice um, and install it uh, or, or install these sub workflows onto the dev branch, you can then start removing the lib directory um, in a, a bit more aggressive fashion rather than wrestling merge conflicts where you don't know what to include and, and it just becomes a mess. So definitely have a look at that. Okay. So what I've done here in, in the share screen, which you should be able to see, um, is that I've created two versions of the pipeline template. So one of the one on the left is with the lib directory. So this was created with NF4 tools 2.12.1, um, where we still had the lib directory. The one on the right is where we've now removed it in 2.13. And so this is kind of just to give you an overview of, of what we've done. So we had all of these files in the lib directory, which had um, particular functions like this, checking configs, versions, email, and various other things. We had a main one that was essentially initializing um, the pipeline itself. And then we had a pipeline specific one that was doing a bunch of other stuff that, that may be validating parameters or genomes and that sort of stuff. Now, all of this has essentially been shifted out into these sub workflows. And we've got three primary sub workflows. So one of them is things that are more generic for, for Nexo pipelines, like printing versions, dumping parameters, checking conda channels. And so I split that out into a separate work, workflow so that those people that are not using an Apple pipelines can now also still use this workflow to import and use this more generic sort of functionality. Um, there's also an NF validation one. So this again, it doesn't necessarily, isn't a specific an NF4 thing. And so here you can start you interacting with the NF validation plugin and printing help and um, validating the parameters. Again, this is something fairly generic. Um, there's also an NF4 pipeline specific one. So for those that want to use the NF4 pipeline functionality can just add this sub workflow on top. And so as I showed you earlier, there's, there's, some, there's some functions in here by checking config. So you can see this function has literally been ported across 
into a sub workflow now. And there's there's been various things like that. So you can you can go through what's in the lib and what's in these sub workflows and slowly comment out and tick it off until you're happy with the integration. Um, citations, workflow versions. There's also now the ability to use um, Nextflow uh, implicitly to get the and uh, collect the Nextflow versions and use multi QC if you're using that in your pipeline to then report those software versions. We don't need to have a custom um, dump software versions process anymore. All of that is handled behind the scenes with Groovy. Um, and then if you want it in multi QC, it just slurps up the same YAML file that we're collecting. And so in the main script, you'll see that um, for the workflow, you'll see that we're basically just including this to dump that at the end of the workflow. Um, but everything else is pretty much here now in these separate scripts. There's also a local sub workflow. Now, this is something that is more specific to your pipeline. So anything that previously was in us in, in the lib directory specific to your RNA seq workflow or other pipeline workflow, you can port them across into this particular file. Um, and what this, this one is doing is it, it contains multiple uh, workflows in here. And the idea behind this is that basically what it allows us to do is detach the pipeline start and end um, uh, logic, which is more or less more niche to that particular pipeline. It allows us to detach that from the workflow itself and have that as a separate work sub workflow that is more pipeline specific. And so this sub workflow here is very much pipeline specific. It allows you to initialize the pipeline um, and then also when the pipeline finishes, it allows you to send these emails. And so before you would have noticed that this sort of logic would have been at the end of a workflow. But this has intentionally been stripped out now because it allows us to um, be more flexible in terms of sharing those workflows as well. So a workflow is essentially now just performing some sort of computation based on what you want it to do in terms of processing data. The before and after bits are now done at the pipeline level. And so in the future, potentially, if you want to start now installing other workflows from other sources like FetchMGS or others, the before and after logic is still constrained to, to something you would do within the pipeline. And then you would simply just install those, uh, those workflows directly and, and use them within your main script. Okay, so that's an overview of these different sub workflows. Um, what it essentially means is that when we when we look at these um, these different main scripts now, we can see um, that we've stripped out a lot. Now this is just a pipeline template. If you look at a more realistic comparison between before and after for RNA seq, you'll see there's a lot of boilerplate stuff um, in the main script. That the main script in the root of the directory, as well as the main script for the main RNA seq workflow, that has all been stripped out now, um, and we're able to delete a lot of that stuff to to keep that workflow as clean as possible in terms of what it's doing um, uh, as a workflow itself. And so, a lot of that has been stripped out now. Um, you can see we're including the sub workflows I mentioned and just invoking those same functions. It's up to you what you include in these local sub workflows for your pipeline. So that keeps it relatively flexible. Okay, so that's sort of an, an overview of, of removing removing the lib directory and, and what that's allowed us to do. There's a couple of other things that have allowed, and we've also included in this tools release, like removing the, um, the check sample sheet script that we're using to check the sample sheet. We're now using um, NF validation for all of this, and that's actually been performed in this initialization sub workflow. This is something specific to the pipeline which is why it's been added to this pipeline initialization sub workflow. Um, and so it's up to you how you configure this. There's a good question on Slack the other day about not being able to emit channels that, that have branching in them, and that's just an expo specific feature. So as long as you're not doing a branch operation in this particular section to, to have different versions, it makes sense to potentially do this um, NF validation loading of your sample sheet here, and then you just pass your inputs to your workflow as a channel. Um, if you can't do that, then you could just copy this block in the main script for your workflow. Either or, um, have a look at RNA seq if, if you you need some some guidance on the dev branch. All right, um, so that's that's pretty much it really in terms of in terms of what this means. It basically means that all of this stuff now that was in the old template um, is now being um, simplified and added into these individual sub workflows. So let's try and find that one actually for for this. So this is where we're printing the citation and the main text. So I think that's in the NF core pipeline one. 
And so, uh, yeah, so here you can see in the, we've got this, uh, the logo and everything is, is now been shipped into this separate sub workflow. And we can import that via a sub workflow next standard next one import to, to use elsewhere. Okay. Finally, um, there are some other things coming up um, that haven't been included as part of this tools release. Really. So just as a heads up, um, there are things that we've done in Fetch MGS um, and in other pipelines, uh, like here. We've now also started to standardize how we're having to NF test inclusion in these in these pipelines. Each component is now in its own separate folder that hasn't been done as part of the latest version. This is something that will come later on. Um, there's also a view to, to make the, the config more granular, as I mentioned, by removing the modules.config to make these, these components more shareable. Um, and in general, there have been a number of improvements in the way that we're using NFTS. So if you want some references to have a look at how this is done, have a look at Fetch NGS um, on the dev branch. There should be a release coming up very soon. Um, and the RNA seq um, pipeline on the dev branch. We're still tackling away a lot of the NFTS stuff for RNA seq but the core sort of porting and removal of the lib directory and modules.config and, um, and, and software versions and all of that sort of stuff has already been stripped out in, in RNAC. And if you have any questions, then please feel free to, um, to ping us some questions um, and we'd be happy to help. So I think that's it for me. Um, and I have to take any questions. Uh, thank you every, every uh, thank you very much, Archil. That was like very enlightening. Uh, let me just okay, I'll spotlight. Yes, I'm back. Uh, yes, so now I will open the floor to see if everyone has any question. Uh, yes, for me, I have had a play like with the template update and I like participated like a bit into that. And I really like like the whole idea about uh, being able like to uncouple uh, some of the logic from the sub workflow, like uh, outside of the sub workflow. And I really like that it makes really everything like more portable and more shareable. And I'm really looking forward for like how that will be able like to come out of that. Um, yes, Jonas just pasted like some uh, reference if you're using like uh, branching the sample sheet into different uh, channels for the epitope prediction pipeline. Uh, Maria K said she had like no question, but she was like very happy with the explanation. Um, anyone else has any question? Um, not a question, just a comment. Um, I remember when I was getting into using NF core templating, the lib directory was one of the things that was most confusing for me um, and, and trying to understand where should I put stuff? Does it belong in the lib directory or does it belong like in a sub workflow? So just from a like accessibility perspective and, and making this more accessible to a broader range of developers, I'm, I'm really excited about this change. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, this is ongoing work. If if there are things that don't quite work for you um, or could Im be improved, I mean, this this has been an accumulation of stuff that that we've pushed to Fetch NGS as well as RNA Seek in, in a more real world context, just to make sure that it works. Um, because they're they're slightly different pipelines in functionality. For example, when Fetch NGS doesn't use any genomes, whereas RNA Seek does. And so, once I added this to RNA Seek, I really sort of figured had a good lay of the land in terms of what we'd need to do to add this to the pipeline template. Um, but I completely agree with you. The lib directory is all, you know, has often been a, a big source of confusion for, for especially for, for people that don't know Ruby and want to step into using the template. Um, and so not having that here as part of um, the, the core pipeline template, I think is going to be massively powerful um, because we would then be using components that people are more familiar with, like sub workflows and modules, which isn't necessarily very different to what Nexo offers already. Um, and so, yeah, in the future that, you know, there might be even more options to really create a very minimal version of the pipeline template for those that don't want to have to maintain their own templates and, and just want a very tiny um, prototype Nexo repo to start with rather than having all the bells and whistles that we currently ship in the import template. And so over time, the plan is to, as, a, as I mentioned, to make each of these components as, as standalone as possible come with the main script, the tests, the configuration, ideally the parameters and the output definitions. 
And that way, anyone can come in and just do an install command and get pretty much everything they need to reuse that component rather than having to look in 15 different places um, where parameters are initialized and where configuration is set and where custom functions are being used in. So that's the long-term plan um, for this. Yeah, Adam Talbot and I have had some good discussions about creating minimal NextFlow templates and then his removal of the lib directory and, and like the version, the NF stem version that he has on his GitHub was one of the improvements that like, uh, I thought, oh, this is a great addition to sort of making it more simple. Yeah. yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, yes. uh, it's actually just to verify the, the, those things for the, uh, where it will become more configurable, what parameters to have and et cetera, like the genomes and so, those are only for the future, right? So there is nothing, what, what I need to do still today with my file place pipeline that doesn't use many of the default par parameters and it doesn't even use fast QC. I still have to weed out all these things with the template update, right? Yes, yes, I completely agree. Um, it's a pain that the thing is we we need to test something when we create this pipeline template, right? So yeah. at the moment it's it's only been multi QC and fast QC and multi QC as part of that template. But now we've got these sub workflows and, and various other things in the pipeline template. The the um, installing fast QC and multi QC is just a much NF core modules command to install either fast QC or multi QC, right? Yeah. Um, if those components, and again, this is where the power of having standalone components comes in. If those components come with their own configuration that isn't in a modules.config now, when we install that module, it already comes with all the publishing logic and everything it needs. And so when we have the logic in the pipeline template as part of NF4 create, we can just say, um, or have an option on the command line that just says, exclude fast QC, exclude multi QC, and it shouldn't have any massive impact on the version of the pipeline template that you've created. And that's also partly why we're going about this whole song and dance to remove the lib directory, because we're, we're moving to, to components that can be controlled by the tooling rather than having lots of different cookie cutter things in the template that says, you know, if you're using iGenomes, if you don't want iGenomes then cut this portion out of the template and it becomes a mess to test and update. Mm. Yep. But yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, good. Yes, no, I think for me, what I like like a lot about like this uh, new uh, update and this new feature is that now the lib uh, folder or what was the lib folder is now not part of the template anymore, but part of the of the module repo of the sub workflow. So it's much easier just to update because we can update that just with tools. And for me, that's like what makes the, the whole stuff like worthwhile. Uh, do we have any other uh, question? Yeah, I feel we are good. Wonderful. So uh, thank you again, Archil. I think that was like uh, quite enlightening. Uh, yes, definitely. I think we can say that if people still have issues, they, still, they should not like hesitate to ask like questions or like. Uh, we have like the help channel, we have like tools, we have linting, we have like every possible channel. Uh, and remember, there are like no stupid questions. We have like the Slack channel for that. Uh, also, Rubber, Rubber Duck is also a good channel if you want to like just rumble and like uh, try to figure out stuff by yourself, but still want like people to listening. So yes, just go on and like uh, figure things out. So thank you very much. Ashil, one last, uh, one last things to say? Yeah, I, I, sort of echoing that to some extent. I mean, this is all, as I said, this is all very new. We've only really added this in the last, in the, in the tools release now. There's a ton of stuff potentially that may or may not be working. We've tested it to the best of our ability, like email, email functionality in the pipeline template, which is horrendous to test um, because you need to set up servers and that sort of stuff. Um, that's a different problem. But if you see anything that looks suspicious or you have any questions or improvements or fixes, please feel free to, to maybe, uh, you know, 
comment on tools if it's an issue with the template itself uh, or the tooling or feature requests um, or for any sort of other general conversation I guess we can uh, we can take it elsewhere on Slack wherever the appropriate channel is um, but yeah thank you for joining and as I said apologies for um, for any inconvenience this has caused in terms of the transition but hopefully once you're there it will make things a lot easier I don't think we're going to be significantly changing this for a while now um, so yeah thank you